Investment firm SSL is speaking out for the first time since the multi-million dollar Usain Bolt scandal, and it's juicy. I'm Khalil Reynolds, financial journalist and educator, and I'll give you the highlights from their seven-page press release. So first of all, SSL said they were the ones who found out about the fraud and notified the FSC on January 10. According to their statement, their attorney interviewed the accused employee on January 6 and 7 in the presence of her attorney, and she confessed. Now, they didn't name the employee, but we can put two and two together that they're actually referring to Gina and Panton, especially since we've seen the confession statement from that interview all over social media. I have another video talking about that, giving you the highlights. So SSL also noted that they do have fraud insurance that covers employee dishonesty and forgery up to $1 million US dollars. And they added that they're trying to get the employee to pay back the money. We'll see how that goes since a lot of it probably doesn't spend off long time. So back to the timeline. So they interviewed Ms. Panton on the 6th and the 7th. They told the FSC about it on the 10th. And then the next day now, the 11th, one of Usain Bolt's people showed up at their office to tell them that Gina went to their office. Now hear this, according to SSL, Jean-Anne showed up to the Bolt office and confessed that she gave them false statements and that she thieved money from Bolt and other SSL clients. And it gets worse. She then asked Bolt's management team to help her pay back the money that she thieved from other people. Righty? Now, according to SSL, she never tell them that part because if you remember in her confession statement that I showed you last week, Bolt's name wasn't on it. So here SSL now, they're saying that they feel that she didn't tell them about Bolt because, you know, he's just such a big international star. And the story would just really blow up once that came out. And also because she did somehow feel like even though she teeth money from Bolt, he would still lend her the money to pay back the other people. So SSL claims that the first time they heard Bolt's name in this whole mess was that day on the 11th when Bolt's people showed up at their office. And then when they heard that, they said, mm, everybody's shocked because now they realize that this is a big ass problem. The other 39 people they could have deal with, but Bolt? Dr. The Honorable Usain St. Leah Bolt, she's some peace, what am I gonna know? Anyway, so back to the timeline. This was a long statement. They addressed a lot of things. A couple days ago, I did a video about reported attempts to wind up SSL's operations. The FSC had gone to court to block them from doing that, and there were a lot of fears that SSL may be looking to file bankruptcy to protect them from having to pay back all these people. Well, SSL claims that's not what happened. Here's what the statement says. Did the directors and shareholders of SSL attempt to wind up the entity in contravention of FSC instructions? Emphatically, no. So they're saying that they appointed a trustee on January 12, and his role was actually to do an independent business review of SSL and determine its financial state of affairs. And they stress, the purpose of the appointment was not, we repeat, not to wind up the company. But then, when you read the rest of the statement, it says his job was to ensure that all necessary conservatory measures were in place over the assets of SSLs. So and now I had to go draw for Google because I'm like, hold on, what exactly are conservatory measures? And this is what Google said. The superintendent of bankruptcy puts in place conservatory measures when a bankruptcy or insolvency estate needs protection. Wait, what? Bankruptcy or insolvency estate? So sounds like you were making plans for a potential bankruptcy, if this is what the trustee's job was. They didn't just want to use those words, but you know, potato, potato. Then they added that, it was intended that he would also use the results of the IBR to explore the restructuring and reorganization options that were available to preserve and enhance the value of the business, operations, and undertakings of SSL for the benefit of all its stakeholders. Well, if it looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, it's a what? Mm-hmm.
because look at who the trustee is, Cadian Campbell. And it says here that he's a trustee licensed under the Insolvency Act by the supervisor of insolvency. He has 30 years experience in corporate recoveries, turnaround management proposals, receiverships, and what? Bankruptcies. Okay, so what else does this long statement say? SSL claims they did not know about the fraud before September 2022. They said disciplinary proceedings, which ultimately ended in her termination, began in 2022. So she has been fired. And it says the hearings were delayed by her medical issues. Remember, she came out with the walker. Now, as part of these proceedings, this is when they found out that she gave a client a false statement. But hear this. They couldn't find any actual fraud, meaning there was no evidence that cash had actually been taken from that particular client's account. But SSL said that what she could have been doing was getting ready to thief money from that account. So the disciplinary panel recommended that she be dismissed for negligence and gross incompetence. Then in December, more things start to come out. Another client came out with an account statement that he said this woman had given him. But when SSL compared it with his actual portfolio, it was all wrong. After that, the lawyers got involved and Ms. Panton gave that now infamous uh, confession statement. And we kind of know the rest that's in the public domain. Now, here's another interesting thing from SSL's public statement. They're still saying they didn't know Bolt had an account there because the account wasn't in his name, but also because the account from 2018 didn't have a lot of money in it that would flag it as a high value account. Very interesting because Abka Fitzhenley, the breaking news boss, posted this two days ago. Between 2012 and 2017, Usain Bolt invested $6.2 million in SSL, and as soon as the sums were invested, they were removed. So I guess that's why SSL can say that in 2018, Bolt's account wasn't a high-value account because it looked like the money gone before it even hit the account. So how did all of this happen? SSL is placing the blame squarely on Jean Ann Panton. Her clients trusted her. She had 30 years in the industry. She was well respected. But SSL says she abused that trust for her personal enrichment. Another major point, and I told you guys this in the very first video I did on this matter. SSL is pointing out that it has an online system and that all clients can use that to track their portfolio, but none of the affected clients used that system. Instead, they relied on statements that Ms. Panton gave them, and SSL says this is probably why they were targeted. They added, being trusted by clients, she was given a great deal of latitude by them. It is now known that some clients even provided pre-signed, undated encashment letters. Guys, please don't do this. I know it can be tempting, you're busy and you just want somebody else to deal with it, Phil. But don't do it. Let this be a warning and a lesson. Next question, did SSL use client money to run their operations? They claim they didn't and that everything was kept entirely separate. So then why did the FSC raise an issue about co-mingling of funds in 2019? I did another video on that too. Next question, did SSL have previous breaches? Their answer, not all breaches relate to fraud or fraudulent activity. Notice they didn't say no. And what I also find interesting is that they go on to say that there was no indication of any fraud or use of client funds by SSL in edit audits, whether by independent auditors or by the FSC. But um, didn't the 2019 FSC report raise an issue about use of client funds? It sure did. So, hmm. Next question, is SSL a failed entity? Their answer, there has been no run to date on investments made through SSL. Well, yeah, because you're barred from doing any business. No money can go in and out of SSL right now. So duh, there's not gonna be a run. So guys, that was a whole lot. What do you think about all of this? Let me know in the comments. And of course, subscribe to my newsletter at kalilareynolds.com newsletter for more info like this.